Andy here. Whether you never want to pay for hosting fees ever again or just want to play around with WordPress at home, I'm going to show you step by step how to install it on a Raspberry Pi and host it online for free. All you need is a Raspberry Pi and an internet connection. No experience needed, I'll guide you through every command from setting up the server and database to installing WordPress itself. We'll then take your site live with a free domain name and lock it down with a free SSL certificate. Right, let's get started. Let's start by visiting the Raspberry Pi website and downloading the Raspberry Pi installer for your operating system. Once opened, you'll need to choose your device. In my case, I'm going to use the Raspberry Pi 4. The next step is to choose the operating system. You can choose the desktop version, but I'm going to be using the Lite version. If you choose the desktop version, you can just use the inbuilt terminal, or I'll show you how to connect from a Windows machine in a moment. With the operating system selected, choose the SD card that you're going to write to. You'll be prompted to add some customization. This allows you to set the host name, username, password, local settings, and enable SSH. We'll then save that, apply custom settings, and write to our SD card. Using my Kingston Industrial SD card, the process took around 1 minute and 30 seconds. When we first boot up, the first thing you'll see is the file system is being resized, followed by another screen where it generates its SSH keys. This is normal, and once finished, it will reboot automatically. If it's picked up a 127 IP address, and when trying to log in, it shows unprivileged users are not permitted, it'll likely reboot a second time, at which point it should pick up your actual IP address, typically a 192 address, and allow you to log in with your username and password. Please make a note of your IP address, as we'll be using this throughout the tutorial. To connect remotely to your Raspberry Pi, you'll need an SSH client. For this tutorial, I'm going to be using MOBA Xterm. It's free and available for Windows. I'll leave a link to it below with some other free options for Windows and Mac users. I'm downloading the latest Home Edition installer version. After following the installation instructions, you can right click Sessions, select New Session and choose SSH. Put your IP address of your Raspberry Pi in the remote host box and the username you chose earlier. Accept the prompt and enter your password. If this is the first time running the program, you'll be prompted for a master password to encrypt all your stored passwords. Let's clear the screen and make some space. And the first thing we'll do is install and update our packages. We'll use the combine command, sudo app update, sudo app upgrade minus y, sudo auto remove minus y. This command updates the packages, upgrades them and removes any unwanted setup files. And the minus y stops the process from asking for confirmation, speeding up the installation. Depending on your internet speed and number of packages, this initial process took about 12 minutes for me. Security updates are especially important, so we're going to set up unattended updates. We start by installing the unattended upgrades package. Once installed, we reconfigure the package as priority low and accept when prompted. This ensures that we only install the security updates. If we were to update all packages, we could potentially break a dependency. And this approach gives us a balance between security and stability. OK, with the initial setup complete, let's get down to the meat and potatoes. We use the following command to install Nginx as the web server. MariaDB is the database, which is the open source version of MySQL, and PHP-FPM to handle PHP processing. We'll now secure our MariaDB installation by running the following command. You can press enter for the password as we're using the sudo command, so we authenticate using the system's root privileges instead of a password. We'll say no to Unix socket authentication as we're already using it, no to change the root password, yes to remove anonymous users, yes to disallow remote root logins, yes to remove the test database, and finally, yes to reload the privilege tables. Our next step is to create the WordPress database and user. Let's log into the MariaDB shell. Enter your sudo password, and then create the database for WordPress. Next, create a user. Ensure that you've used your own strong password and note it down. Grant all privileges to the database for the WordPress user. Flush the privileges so they take effect, and then exit. Our next step is to edit the PHP FPM configuration file. This acts as a communication bridge between Nginx and PHP. If you don't know your PHP version or aren't sure of the files path, you can quickly find it using the following command. You can find your exact PHP version by typing PHP minus V in the terminal. And you only need the first two digits like 8.2 or 8.4. Now inside this file, you just need to confirm the following lines. These settings tell our web server, Nginx, how to talk to PHP. The user and group lines define the user PHP FPM runs as, and the listen lines specify the socket Nginx will use to communicate with PHP. Once they match, save the file and exit, then restart your PHP FPM service. 
OK, let's create a new Nginx configuration file for our WordPress site. We add the following configuration, making sure your PHP version is correct and replace your domain.com with the Raspberry Pi IP address. We'll change it later to your domain. Save the file and then we create a symbolic link to enable the site. You can see this demonstrated by listing both directories. We can then tidy the directory by removing the default Nginx configuration. It's always good practice to test the Nginx configuration before reloading. If the test is successful, restart Nginx. OK, our next step is to create the WordPress directory and enter it. Once in, download the latest version, extract the files, and move the WordPress contents into our already created directory. We can then tidy up what we don't need. Our next step is to set the correct ownership for the WordPress directory and set the permissions. With this done, we can now open our web browser and navigate to the Raspberry Pi IP address. If you've forgotten it, just type hostname minus capital I in your terminal. At this point, we should be presented with our WordPress install and we can follow the installation prompts. After choosing your language, we have our credentials. Enter the database name, username, password, where it's located, which is localhost, and set up a table prefix. WP underscore is fine. After that, you'll be on the final screen and this is where you create your WordPress site's login details. So make sure you write these down. Enter your site title, create a username and set a password and email address. Once you've done this, you'll be prompted to log in. And at that point, you'll have a fully working WordPress site. The next step of the tutorial will be show you how to set up a domain name and secure the site with HTTPS, which I strongly advise if you plan on using this on the internet. The first thing we need to do is go to a website called DuckDNS. This is a free service that allows you to register a DNS name for free. You need to log in or create an account. Once in, you'll have a screen like this. Add the name you want to call your server and press add domain and you'll see your new domain added below. Let's go back to our terminal and install DuckDNS on our client. As your home IP address changes from time to time, this package will update your DNS record with any changes, ensuring anyone that visits your domain will get to the right place. If you have any problems installing, try sudo app update to get the latest packages. The next thing we're going to do is create a directory to store your DuckDNS script. Enter the directory and create a new script called DuckDNS.sh. Paste the following script replacing your subdomain and your DuckDNS token with the actual values from the DuckDNS web page. We'll use this command so we can run the script. OK, let's try it. Then we can check the log file. If it shows OK, all is well. We'll now automate our IP address updates using a cron job. This is Linux's way to schedule scripts. And we add the following line to run the script every five minutes. You can now save and exit. In preparation for our certificate, we need to change the Nginx configuration file so it recognises our domain name, rather than our IP address. This is where you change your server name to your actual DuckDNS domain. Our next step is to install CertBot and the Nginx plugin. Just before we fetch our certificate, you need to make sure that our site is available from the internet. To do this, you need to access your home router settings. You're looking for a section called Port Forwarding, usually found under Security. You want to create two new rules to allow your local address, which is your Raspberry Pi, to receive requests on ports 443, which is HTTPS, and port 80, which is HTTP. Once you've applied these changes, we can move to the next step, and that's installing CertBot. We can now obtain our SSL certificate by running the following command, but ensure you use your own DNS name. Follow the CertBot prompts, and CertBot will automatically configure Nginx to use the SSL certificate. It may also ask you if you want to redirect all HTTP traffic to HTTPS. So you'll want to select this option. As before, test your Nginx config. And if all is well, restart Nginx. Our last step is to update our WordPress configuration. We can do this by connecting to our local IP address. Log in to your WordPress admin dashboard. Go to Settings and General and change the WordPress address URL and site address URL to HTTPS. We can now navigate to our domain name. As WordPress was installed without a domain name, it's advisable to use a plugin like Better Search Replace to ensure our database changes all references to our IP address to our domain name. When shown, press Activate, then head to Tools and select Better Search Replace. When you see this screen, you would search for your IP address and replace with your domain name. I then just selected everything and did a dry run. Then you can just instruct it to change the entries. This will ensure there are no issues locating files or showing images if you had already installed a theme. Now, if we open a new private window or look on a mobile phone, your website should be live. Before you shoot off, there's a couple of other recommended libraries and tweaks that I recommend to ensure you have no issues with WordPress. 
The first one is the GD library, which is used for image processing. This enables automatic resizing, cropping and editing of images uploaded to your website. The next set of libraries will help WordPress with things like secure online payments and talking to other websites. The image ic library helps with things like image manipulation above and beyond the GD library. Zip is for unpacking plugins and creating backups. And the last package helps WordPress handle different languages so it will display correctly all over the world. The last library is the XML library. This lets WordPress process XML data, which is for importing and exporting content and creating XML sitemaps for search engines. It's also often a requirement for themes and plugins. My last tip is to increase some of the default values. To do this, we open the PHP INI file. You can use Ctrl and W to search. Type the string you're looking for and press enter. Maximum input time. This directive sets the maximum time in seconds. This allows PHP time to receive input, like file uploads. Maximum execution time. This directive sets the maximum time in seconds a script is allowed to run. Increase this value to allow longer processing times. And finally, the memory limit. You should now be good for 99% of plugins and themes, but it's always best to check the documentation if you have any issues. Right, with the changes made, we can save the file with Ctrl and X and press Enter. And let's start PHP FPM so that our changes take effect. It's probably best to restart Nginx at the same time. The server section under Site Health is another handy place you can check these parameters. And there you have it. You now have a fully functioning WordPress site running at home. Let me know if this helped by hitting the thumbs up button and make sure you're subscribed as I'll be following up with ways you can speed up and secure self-hosting very soon. Of course, if you run into any problems, drop me a comment below and of course I'll do my very best to help you out. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.